back to TCS Star Frogs. My name's Travis, and today I want to do an update on all of my isopods. But before I do that, I just want to do a kind of touch base on how crazy this coronavirus thing is. I stood in line today for almost an hour just waiting to get inside of a grocery store. And I did that just so I could get some potato flakes, so I could make some more fly cultures, since that's one of the key ingredients in the fly media that I make. But anyway, crazy times hope everyone is taking care of themselves out there but without further ado let's go check out some isopods to start out we'll check out my porcelia lavis marble and these guys kind of vary from brown to almost a light peach color to white they're a fairly big isopod and they reproduce pretty quickly as well Next up are the Porcilio pruinosis. These are the powder orange isopod. These guys are a little bit smaller and these guys are really prolific. I didn't really think they were breeding but then when I went and checked out their colony recently there are a ton of little babies in there. So they're probably one of the most prolific isopods that I keep. These are Porcilio hoffmansegii. These are the largest isopod that I keep. They're probably just over an inch and they're a little bit slower for reproduction but I do have quite a few right now. One of my friends was telling me that they run really male heavy so I've been trying to hold them back before I let any go. Uh, just so that I can make sure that I have enough females so they'll keep reproducing. These guys also tend to like it a little bit drier in their enclosure, but I do keep one side pretty moist, and I just sprayed all the enclosures, so if any of them look a little bit overly wet, that's why. These guys are Porcilio Lavis Dairy Cow. These are another isopod that can be really prolific. I didn't think there were that many in this container either until I started digging through the substrate and noticed that there are just babies everywhere. These are probably one of my favorites as well just because they've got that unique look about them and the fact that they're prolific and there's always a ton of them in the tub makes them kind of fun to keep. It's also fun to throw food in there and just watch them swarm and eat all the food really quick. And these are a newer isopod that I got, Porcilio Scaber, the lottery mix. And these come in a wide variety of colors. So I've got ones that are white, black, some are brown, some are black and red, some are more orange. So this should be a pretty fun group to see what the offspring look like. And I was pretty excited. I actually did find babies in this enclosure. And I've only had these guys a couple months. So I just discovered that they were breeding, which makes me pretty happy. And you can see a couple of the babies here when I move the substrate around. There's actually quite a few in there. Yes! 
We interrupt this broadcast to bring you breaking news. TCS Dart Frogs now offers a wide line of isopod nutrition. Brought to you by Vivariums in the Mist. And next up are the Armadillidium maculatum zebras. My colony hasn't been doing that well lately. Ever since I moved them to a larger tub, um, I've lost quite a few individuals. And I'm not really sure quite why that is. I've kept them pretty much the same as I used to. So hopefully they bounce back. I have seen some offspring in there, so hoping that they'll kind of bounce back to the original numbers that they used to have. And these are Armadillidium granulatum. This is a fairly new isopod to my collection as well. This is kind of cool. This one is actually halfway through molting. So let's get my camera to focus. You can see that half of its molt is still on its body and the other half has already um, come off and that's why he's kind of two-toned. But I find these isopods to be really interesting because the yellow that you see on them almost looks like gold in person. It's really cool. And there's a little baby next to one of the adults. They started breeding pretty soon after I got them, so they seem to be pretty prolific and a very large isopod. And here I was just trying to kind of dig through all the substrate and see if I could find some more babies. And there's actually a good number in there. Some of them have really nice uh, yellow or gold spotting as well so hopefully those will grow up to be nice adults this next one is armadillidium magic potion and these guys come from Japan. These guys are pretty new to my collection as well. And I haven't found any babies from these guys yet, but I'm hoping to find some soon. As I bought these the same time I bought all the other armadillidiums. And all the other ones seem to be having babies already, so these guys shouldn't be too far behind. And these are Armadillidium vulgare Orange Vigor. These are one of the newer isopods to my collection as well. And they're a pretty good size Armadillidium. Not as big as the uh, Granulatum, but pretty good size. And I have found babies in this enclosure, which is kind of exciting because this is a variety that I've always wanted to work with. And so it's pretty neat to see lots of little babies in there. And here's one of the tiny little babies. You can see it's just a little bit bigger than a lot of the springtails. And these guys are Armadillidium gesteroi. I think that's how you say it anyway. But these guys are really cool because they're absolutely massive. I think they're one of the largest armadillidiums and the color on them is really cool. These guys are pretty new to my collection as well and I have found a few babies in there as well so be pretty exciting to get a whole big colony of these going especially because their size they're just kind of impressive to have a big colony when they're that big. These are another fairly recent addition, the Armadillidium Corsireum. And these guys remind me a lot of the zebra isopod, but they seem to stay a little bit smaller and they have a little bit more irregular patterning. And also the darker portions of them are more brown 
although they seem to be variable between brown and black. And the reason I think they stay smaller is that they haven't really grown much since I got them, and they're also reproducing at a pretty quick rate. And you can see here as I dig through the substrate, there's actually quite a few babies down there. They're still pretty tiny, you can see in comparison to the springtails running around. And next are the Armadillidium klugii montenegro, or the clown isopod. These are one of my favorites just because how colorful they are. And so far, I've had these guys since around uh, September, and they've been very productive. I started out with, I think, 10 or 12, and now I've probably got 20 or 30, and they're probably just one of my favorites just because the way they look and just a really neat isopod in my opinion. And next is the Cubera species rubber ducky. These guys are a pretty sought after isopod and they are very neat. Unfortunately, they hide the majority of the time. They like to bury themselves. Here I've dug these ones out and of course as soon as you dig them out, they want to go right back into hiding. But still a very neat isopod and I'm still waiting for these guys to reproduce and if they do, I'll be quite excited because they're a little bit more difficult. And these guys are Cubera species Amber. This is probably my favorite species out of the different Cuberis that are pretty new to the hobby. And I've got a little bit over a dozen of these guys. They're just so adorable the way they look. And the way they move reminds me of like a tank. Their locomotion is a little bit different than all the other isopods. And supposedly these guys are pretty prolific, but so far mine haven't produced any babies yet. So hopefully in the near future I'll get some babies, but time will tell. And now some time-lapse video of isopods eating. In this first clip they're eating isogrub which are freeze-dried minnows. Here they're eating iso meal, which are freeze-dried mealworms. These isopods are eating isoscampi, which is freeze-dried shrimp.
And here they're eating ISO greens, which are freeze dried peas. And I've had great feeding reactions with all of these foods, but these peas seem to kind of top all of them. I haven't had any isopods that would refuse these and almost all of them come out and eat these immediately. All right, thanks for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed already, I'd love it if you subscribe to my channel. And I want to say a big shout out to all the people who have subscribed recently. I grew almost a thousand subscribers this last couple weeks. And so I just wanted to say thank you to all you guys who've subscribed. I really appreciate it. And thank you to everyone who's watching. If you guys have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos, please let me know down in the comments and I will try to answer those questions and get videos made if you guys have any requests. Also, if you guys want to check out any of my social media, I'll leave all the links in the description. And if you guys want to check out my website, it's tcsstartfrogs.com. Also, if you guys want to check out any of those new isopod foods or any of the isopods that I sell, uh, those will be on my website also. Thank you guys again for watching. Take care of yourselves out there and have a great day.